What is the most disrespectful thing you've seen at a memorial or funeral? My mom showed up at my dad's funeral. They got divorced when I was in my early 20s after the kind of bad marriage where you tell yourself that you're staying together for the kids but really you're just too bitter to make the first move to end it. When they split up, it was a profound relief for all parties involved. My mom bought a new house and reinvented herself, while my dad kept the old place and leaned even more heavily on the bottle and cigarettes. Fast forward 10 years, during which my dad stayed quiet about my mom, while my mom never missed an opportunity to trash him. At first, I figured she was keen to establish herself as the wronged party, shifting the blame for the divorce onto him, but after a few years, it became something more gleefully pathological. Some people play the victim card, but she played the whole deck. Minor things became forums for digging at him. She once told me with a straight face that there were only four teaspoons in the kitchen drawer because she left half the cutlery at his house to be fair and equitable, unlike him. She'd bring up petty grievances like, remember that one thing he said back in 1979, when we were on vacation, and he refused to look at the map? It went on and on. It had been a decade. We were way past the point of just moving on. When my dad got sick, he ignored it. Why? Medical advice. The doctor told him he had sciatica and should take a couple of months off work. Completely disregarding the clubbed fingers, reduced lung function, confusion, and weight loss, all the classic signs of untreated small cell lung cancer that had metastasized to his bones, colon, liver, and brain. By the time my sister and I got involved, the ship was sinking fast. After a few more months of utter misery, my dad filled a glass with scotch, turned on the game, called my aunt to help him with dinner that evening, and then took his entire month's supply of morphine in one sitting. It probably seemed like the best option to him, and honestly, I can't fault him for it. He and I had talked about his funeral before he passed, the writing was on the wall, and there were no miracle cures for the assorted stage 4 cancers competing for the honor of carrying him off. He wasn't particularly religious, but he enjoyed church and its rituals. He wanted hymns sung, Bible passages quoted, and the like. But he had one specific request. He didn't want my mom there. She had been nothing but unpleasant to his family since the divorce, and he didn't want any trouble at the funeral. He didn't want to ask her himself, so he asked me to do it. Their limited contact since his diagnosis had been about property, and her comment upon learning that he had weeks to live was, good. After he made the smart decision to take himself out of his misery, I went to talk to her. I told her about his request and asked her as a favor, to honor it. She bristled at the idea but eventually agreed. I even softened the situation by inviting her to dinner after the funeral. I told her I'd cooked that pasta she liked and had some pictures of her newborn grandson she hadn't seen. It'd be fun. So, it was a surprise when she showed up at the funeral the next morning, dressed in a bright red dress and a huge red hat, laughing and making herself the center of attention. I pulled her aside and reminded her that we had a deal, but she laughed it off. This is a public place, she said. He can't tell me what to do anymore. His family just has to put up with it. She sat in the front row, grinning like she just won a medal. She sang as loudly as she could and smirked or sneered at every solemn moment. No drama worth writing about unfolded. No one called her out or made a scene. No one lost their composure. She did her thing, and we did ours. When the funeral ended, we went to my dad's favorite bar to reminisce. My mom wanted to come, but since she had taken a cab to the funeral, no one mysteriously had room in their car to give her a ride. We drank, made small talk, and by 9 o'clock that night, I was in another city eating Indian food with a friend who'd also just lost his dad. The next morning, I was on a 10-hour flight home to my wife and kid. Truth be told, I never particularly liked my dad. I didn't feel anything when he died. No loss, no sadness. He wasn't a bad guy, but he was a terrible parent. He had no interest in us as kids and didn't even try. He never taught us to ride a bike, never smiled at our drawings, never glanced at a report card, and never showed up for a game or recital. He never, come to think of it, bought us Christmas or birthday presents. He never told us he loved us. But honestly, that was fine. Those things only hurt if you expect otherwise. He simply wasn't that guy, and I accepted it. He was just a man we lived with, like a much older roommate who liked to drink, smoke, and watch football. And now, he's gone. It was odd. He didn't care about me, and I didn't care about him. But I didn't hate him. Now, I hate my mom. 